Welcome to day 85 of our scripture reading and daily encouragement. Today we're going to finish up Judges by covering chapters 20 and 21. We're going to read the entire book of Ruth, which is Ruth 1, 2, 3, and 4. We're going to finish up Luke chapter 11 covering 13 through 54. And just touch into Luke 12 by covering verses 1 through 3. So there's a lot to get into, so we'll dive into it this morning. And judges were coming off the Sodom and Gomorrah type scenario. There's a tragedy that's happened. It's disgusting. And the tribes of Israel actually unite to defeat this evil. Evil had been allowed in their land because they weren't following God. They had turned from God. But they finally said, "This enough is enough. And it took this tragedy to unite them. And I think sometimes we can apply that to our lives. There are tragedies going on all around us. And it's easy to get wrapped up in that. But a lot of times we can look at these tragedies and allow that to unite us in tough times and persecution. In the midst of evil is when we as Christians often unify to defeat that evil. And we kind of live in a time now where many of us are saying enough is enough. It's time for us to unite against that evil. Now for us, it's not necessarily with a sword. It's with the sword of the Spirit. It's with the Word of God. It's with praying. So I want to encourage you in this time when you see evil going on around you, Don't lose sight of your relationship with God like the Israelites did, but let's unite to fight this evil together. As we end this book in Judges, it says the Israelites had no leader. It says they did whatever seemed right in their own eyes, and that feels a lot like where we are today. No matter what those around us are doing, whether we have a strong leader or not, We have to remain faithful and obedient to God. It doesn't matter what's going on around us. Even when no one else is being faithful and obedient, we have to remain faithful and obedient. I want you to be encouraged by that today, that we can stay strong in this time of evil, in this time of darkness, unite together and keep our faith in God. As we enter the book of Ruth, Again, we'll cover that entire book today, so I'm going to try to go through it really quickly. I think it's very important that we look at the scripture and we see the perspective of a woman. You know, most of the characters that we cover in our scripture readings and reading the Bible are male. And if we don't perceive if we don't see the perspective of a female, we're only seeing half of God's image. We're told in Genesis that it takes both male and female. Male and female were made in his image. So we pick up this story and we've got this man named Elimelech. And he's married to Naomi. They have two sons. They move from Bethlehem to Moab. It's during the time of the judges. So even though most of the Israelites are not following God, we do see this family that has remained faithful Just like I encourage that we need to remain faithful. This family's remain faithful, but they have to move from their homeland of Bethlehem to Moab during a famine. Elimelech dies. It says that their sons married two Moabite women. One of those sons married a woman named Ruth. And pay attention here, because as we go through this, Jesus himself is a descendant that comes through the lineage of Ruth. Now, Naomi suffers another tragedy. Her sons die, so her husband has died. Now her sons have died, so now she is left with two daughters. I'm sorry, two daughter-in-laws. And she is in a land that is foreign to her. These two daughter-in-laws are Moabite women. They're not Israelites. So Naomi decides, I'm going to go back to Bethlehem. The famine is over. So you daughter, my daughter-in-laws, you you can stay here in your own land. But it says Ruth clung tightly to Naomi. See, Ruth saw something in Naomi's God. She had a relationship with Naomi and she didn't want to give that up. It didn't matter to her where she was from or if she was going to have to leave family. If you pick up in Ruth 1 chapter, uh, Ruth chapter 1 verse 16, it says, but Ruth replied. So this is after Naomi has said, "You, you go on, you go on and... And uh, you stay here while I go on, I guess is what I should say. But it says, but Ruth replied, don't ask me to leave you and turn back. This is Ruth talking to Naomi. Wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you live, I will live. Your people will be my people and your God will be my God. Wherever you die, I will die. 
and there I will be buried. Let may the Lord punish me severely if I allow anything but death to separate us. See, Ruth had seen something. Ruth had seen something in the God that Naomi served. It was real, and she was tired of the false gods that her people had served. So we see Ruth go back to Bethlehem, to Judah, with Naomi. And it says there was a wealthy man. His name was Boaz. And Ruth was just kind of scavenging, working in his field, his grain fields, just trying to get food to eat. And even though she was a foreigner, Boaz saw how faithful she had been to Naomi. He knew that. Boaz blessed her, and he showed her favor. Then we see Ruth boldly approach him, and ultimately she's saying, I want to be married to you. And Boaz was very gentle with her, and he honored the tradition by making sure there was another man, and that other man was really in, in line to take the land that belonged to Naomi and marry Ruth. But Boaz goes and talks to that man and, and makes sure he doesn't want to, to, to take that on, so to speak. And then we see Boaz marry Ruth. They have, have a child named Obed. Obed becomes the father of Jesse. Obed ultimately is the grandfather of David. So we're seeing this lineage unfold that leads to the great King David and ultimately to the greater King Jesus. And there's, this is a lot of a story just kind of packed into a few minutes, but we see so much in, in this story about Ruth. We see loyalty. She had loyalty to Naomi. We see perseverance. We see faith. We see her choose the living God over the dead gods or the false gods that her people had chosen. We see her as a hard worker. We see her have boldness. We see her be virtuous. And we see her be patient. We see lots of good characteristics in Ruth. And I think we need to pay attention to these, but we also see some great characteristics in Boaz. We see him honor Ruth. We see him be generous and compassionate. And I think if you look at these qualities between Boaz and Ruth and how they came together, it's an incredible love story. It should be a model for what our children would look for in marriage. A woman like Ruth that's loyal, persevering, faithful, hardworking, bold, virtuous, but yet patient. And our daughters should be looking for men who have honor for their women, who are generous, who are compassionate. See, too many times in our world, and you guys know this, too many times our relationship is based on lust and an attraction. It's based on sex and compatibility. But here we see a relationship take its time to develop and develop in the right way with the right characteristics of these two people. And I think that should be an encouragement for our young people and it should, would be, would, should be what we as parents are teaching our kids to seek after in marriage. And we transition over into Luke. And we see Jesus is accused. He's accused of getting his power to cast out demons from Satan. And we've covered this story before, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time here. But just a reminder, he says, how could I be empowered by Satan? I'm fighting his demons. And his kingdom can't fight against itself. I'm stronger than him, and I've come to defeat his kingdom. But he says some very strong things here. If you are against me... If you disagree with me, you're against me. And if you're against me, he gives an example of where you're going to be tormented. You're going to be tormented by demons. It says a demon leaves a person, looks for a dry place, comes back, brings seven more evil with it. Jesus is basically saying, I'm here to cast out demons. But if you reject me, you will be tormented. You will be worse off. You will be attacked by more demons. He says, if you are my follower, you'll repent. You'll let your light shine. So there's a difference. If you reject me, you're going to be tormented. If you follow me, you will change the things that are ugly in your life, the things that are wrong in your life, and you'll let your light shine. And then he talks to the Pharisee, and I think this is words that we need to hear and be reminded of over and over. He tells the Pharisee, 
you're very careful to clean up what's on the outside. You want to look good in front of people, but your heart, your insides are filthy. Worry about cleaning up your heart. So Jesus is telling us, if you clean what's on the inside that no one can see your heart, then we'll be clean all over. But don't just try to act clean and have this dirty heart like the Pharisees did. Jesus is saying, don't be caught up in doing good things to look good, trying to gain honor. If we aren't willing to clean and change our hearts, he's not asking for you to be perfect or for me to be perfect, but he's asking us to be continually trying to change our hearts, our thoughts, our mind. And then he warns us not to be hypocrites as we finish up this scripture. So there's been a lot of scripture today. We're cramming it in together. But when we look at Ruth and Boaz, their actions and their lives showed showed their hearts. It showed that they were virtuous. They were generous in nature. While the lives of the Pharisees show unclean hearts. For the Pharisees, it was about the show. So I'm going to ask you a question this morning because I think these there are times that we need to seek and we need to ask Jesus to show us when we follow him, when we do things in his name. Is it about the show for us? Is it about what people will see so we'll look good? Or are we truly allowing Jesus to mold and change our hearts so that we would carry these characteristics that Ruth carried? She wasn't an Israelite, but she chose to follow God. She chose to allow her heart to be molded towards the things God would ask. And she became a mighty woman in the lineage of Jesus because of it. So I want you to be encouraged today. Let Jesus look at your heart. Let him clean your heart. Let that lead to your good actions. Don't let your good actions cover up an ugly heart. Hope you're encouraged today, and I hope you have a great day.